our journey was so difficult in the early days of just surviving and you know at one point I think there was like 12 of us in the house you know <laughs> you had no luxuries of extra food or chocolates or crisps so everything was just you know especially being the youngest what could I have out of out of what was actually left on the plate when I left school and dad said like if she wants to work she can go and work in the local factory with the other auntie that's all that's that's the option for her if not she stays at home um, yes because marriage is the next step and it was my brother who said look dad you know she's gone through the education system trust me let me you know let her apply for these jobs I will drop her off, I'll pick her up. He would bring in applications every day, my brother, and I must have applied for I don't know how many jobs, one after the other. And then I applied for a role in TSB as a cashier, and it was at that time, unemployment was rife. Um, 300 ap applicants for the one job. If it hadn't been for him, I wouldn't have taken the step into working as a cashier. If it hadn't been for him um, supporting me and challenging his dad to allow me to do what I'm doing, I wouldn't be here today. Because of that, the way that he helped me, I'm a total believer in mentoring, a total believer in sponsoring. But I also would say a mentor can be anybody. My mother was a mentor to me. She wasn't educated, but she was my biggest one person I now still constantly refer to and benchmark myself as a mother. When I first became the first Asian bank manager, you know, the, the, the challenges I had to even reach to that position was huge. You know, um, I was given a role in, in, in a branch called Walton-on-Thames, which is, if you're familiar with the geography, it's the most wealthiest areas, very, very mainstream, very white um, and upper class. So, you know, to be, you'd be given a role in that branch, was, which was wonderful for me, but then coming out and getting customers asking me, uh, can I speak to the bank manager and say, look, can I help you? And they literally would look at me from head to toe and thinking that I couldn't understand English and then I had to repeat the question three times. No, can I speak to the bank manager? And I said, yes, can I help you? Mm -hmm. The next step was when I got further promotion and came in to work at head office and here was a floor full of white male dominated building. And it was quite a shock to me because at least in the branches you had mixture of females in there, there were the odd ethnic minorities, but here it was very, very rare to see a, anybody of my colour, let alone a female. So many of my colleagues wrote back to me, emailed me and said, look, actually I was thinking of leaving the bank, I don't think I could cope. Actually I've been forced to get married, how do I cope, you know, how do I balance my life? My husband's saying this or my wife is saying this and my line manager doesn't understand me, he, he won't promote me because I wear her job and how do I get it across to him, I'm still... So there all of these questions that were being fired at me. And how many other Kamels are there in your organisation that are like me, that are working this hard but never get the opportunity? And so that's when I really started understanding the real barriers within this industry. And it wasn't until this key moment in my life that I realised I had more to give than I was allowed to give. I had an idea, my husband was an entrepreneur, he was constantly complaining about access to finance from banks, and especially you know, with our organisation. So I did some of my own private research and I had a paper and I had an idea of how Lloyds Bank could help ethnic minority Asian communities, um, especially small entrepreneurs, get started up. Yeah, I go home, I change into my salvar kameez, first thing I do is go into the kitchen and make the, you know, help with the cooking. I do the cleaning, I do the cooking. Um, we live in a very traditional household where the men sit, they make the decisions and women don't really have a say in the family business. Can you imagine me saying that to my, my boss who would think that, gosh, is that you then? Is that the type of person you are? Then you can't make decisions, don't they trust you? Because he couldn't fathom the, the environment that I was in. So therefore, I never spoke about my home life to anybody at work. Mm -hmm.